In this last video about working with complex numbers, we're going to be looking at doing division by a binomial, by that full uh, complex number, 3 plus 2i. And as I mentioned before, the trick is the complex conjugate. See, if I try to multiply just this denominator times i, that's going to fix this one. But then you end up multiplying the 3 times i, which gives you, like it fixes one part of it, but it causes a problem somewhere else. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on that denominator. We're going to multiply it times its conjugate, which is 3 minus 2i. Now that changes the problem unless I also multiply in the numerator times 3 minus 2i. And again, the whole purpose of this is to create the product of complex conjugates. And as we saw in a previous video, the shortcut here is to have the sum of squares. So 3 squared plus 2 squared. And we just work this out. So 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, and they combine to give us 13. So that's going to be the denominator of my fraction now, 13. In the numerator, we would have 5 times 3 minus 2. Ah, and you're probably asking, why didn't you go ahead and distribute that? A lot of times I pause just in case there are com common factors that can reduce. Because if I can reduce that, that means less work for me later on. But 5 and 13 don't reduce. So I need to go ahead and distribute in the numerator. So we have 15 minus 10i. And this is all divided by 13. But it's really in our best interest to go ahead and separate this. So we have clearly the real part versus the imaginary part. So each of these will be over 13. So we have 15 over 13 minus 10 over 13. Now you can put the i next to the 10. Don't put it next to the 13. I typically will do this. I'll put it right next to that fraction part. That way you really see that the imaginary part is the fraction negative 10 over 13. All right, uh, let's try this again. Let's try 18 divided by 5 minus i. So just like this last problem, we should go ahead and start by multiplying times the complex conjugate of that denominator. I'm not worried so much about the 18. He's not the problem. It's the fact that I'm dividing by a complex number. That's the issue. So multiply times its conjugate, 5 plus i. Do that in both the numerator and denominator so that we will still have an equivalent value. Now remember, the reason we do this in the denominator with the conjugate is so that we have the product of complex conjugates and we can use that shortcut, the sum of squares. So this becomes 5 squared plus, now I cautioned you about this a couple of videos ago, it's the real part squared and then the imaginary part squared. There's no i. The imaginary part is supposed to be the coefficient of i. You might say, I don't see that. It's understood to be a 1. So this is 5 squared plus 1 squared. Just like in the last one, you've got this product here. So you get 3 squared and you get 2 squared. You took the coefficient of the imaginary piece. All right, so now we just work this out. OK, so that's 25. Remember that 1 squared is 1, not 2. And 25 plus 1 is 26. So in all of this work, I now have my denominator of 26. My numerator, let's leave this factored at first, 18 times 5 plus i. And let's see if there are any common factors between 18 and that denominator of 26. And we say yes. Uh, these guys have a common factor of 2, so I can go ahead and reduce each of these guys by that factor. So 2 goes into 18 9 times, and 2 goes into 26 13 times. You don't have to simplify right here, but I think it's really the best thing for us because it lets us get to smaller numbers before I multiply and get to larger numbers. Now let's distribute in the numerator. So this is 45. 9 times i is 9i. And this is all over 13. All right, so now let's separate this. And we have 45 over 13 plus the imaginary part. 
is going to be 9 over 13 i. Again, be very careful that you don't put the i in the denominator. We worked so hard to rework this so I didn't have anything imaginary in the denominator. It'd be a shame for us to mess it up at the very end. All right. Let's do this last example. Let's do 2 plus 7i over 3 minus 4i. Now again, we're not worried so much about what happens in the numerator. The guy's just got to come along for the ride. It's all about getting rid of the imaginary pieces in the denominator. So again, we use the complex conjugate. I see 3 minus 4i. The complex conjugate for this is 3 plus 4i. So do that in both the numerator and the denominator, like this. Now, the numerator is going to be a bit of a problem, but let's go ahead and take care of that denominator. Okay. The whole reason for this is so that we can use that special shortcut that's going to give us 3 squared plus 4 squared. Working this out piece by piece, that's 9 plus 16, and that equals 25. So, big fraction, everything is divided by 25. Well, what about the numerator? Well, this is a product, and it's a product of two complex numbers, so we have to FOIL just like we've done before. So when I FOIL, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4i is 8i, then you go to the inside part, so 7i times 3 is positive, 21i, and then plus 28i squared. All right, well, we have the i squared part here, so we know what happens. Plus 28i squared becomes negative 28. And now we rewrite. So 6 and negative 28 become negative 22. Combine the imaginary parts. 8i plus 21i is 20. 9i, and this is all over 25. And like we've done previously, separate this so we can clearly see the, the real part is negative 22 over 25, and the imaginary part is 29 over 25i. It may not be the prettiest looking number in the world, but this is how we do it. Piece by piece, we take our time. We use the complex conjugate, to get a nice denominator without anything imaginary. And in the numerator, we just have to multiply. In this example, we had a FOIL. In the last example, we just ended up distributing because it was a single term in the numerator. So if you need to, you can always take this product, this FOIL that you need to do, and just take it off to the side, and then you can bring it back in here as the negative 22 over 29i. But at the very end, you want to make sure that you do clearly write your answer. It's the real part, and then the imaginary part.